All right, guys, here we go. Episode six, Flooring with Angelo is here with us today. Angelo and I have been out quite a few times together. He's a very chill guy. Unlike myself, I'm very hyper, very loud. Angelo is very quiet and very chill. A little bit about Angelo. He just cracked 100,000 subscribers on YouTube at that 105,000 mark. He's got consistent five-figure views on his uploads every time he uploads a video. And he's got 20,000 followers on Twitter, which is unheard of these days. I can't even touch 20,000 followers on Twitter. And he is consistently one of the most active explorers I know. He is always on the go. He's always hitting something. So here we go, guys. Angelo, thanks for joining us on the All Access Photography Podcast. All right, I gotta I gotta bring myself down because I'm all hyper, I'm all <laughs> excited, and you're just chill, Angelo. So I gotta balance it out a little bit. I'm gonna bring myself down a little bit back to your level. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Just be yourself, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So uh tell us a little bit about Angelo and how you got into exploring abandoned places. Uh well, how did I get started exploring abandoned places? I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. Um, there's a lot of history, obviously, behind a lot of the locations that we go to. Um, I've always been into history, big history buff. Uh, and then later on, I started ghost hunting, basically. So the two and two both kind of go together, I suppose. All right. And then um, at what point did you decide to get into the YouTube space and what inspired that? So I had already started YouTube, um, really had no idea what the hell I was even doing. Uh, I was just kind of doing random <laughs> vlogs, and then I kind of got into uh, documentary-style videos where I'd just pick some topics and then just kind of run off of them. Took a lot of research, a lot of yeah. time to put them together, obviously. And uh, yeah, it just kind of gradu graduated from that into, I'm like, okay, well, there's a bunch of other people who are kind of documenting abandoned places as well. So maybe I can do the same thing in my own style and see where it goes. So you've experienced a pretty rapid growth on YouTube and you hit that 100,000 uh, subscriber mark pretty quickly. Um, and you, again, like I said, you're regularly getting five digit views on every video. Was it like that from the start? Or was there one video that you put out that really kicked things off for you? Uh, it definitely didn't start off like that at all. Um, <laughs> it took a lot of work. I remember when we first start. well, when I first started, um, I mean, getting 100 views was exciting. Because uh, you're like, oh, I started from zero. Now I'm getting 100. And then it eventually went to, you know, 200. Then I started getting 1,000 and so on and so forth. Uh, there wasn't really one particular video, I'd say. Uh, it took a long time. It felt like forever uh, from the moment I started until where I got here. Um, yeah. And the funny part is, is a lot of people think that a lot of the exploring stuff started on Exploring with Angelo that specific channel, it actually didn't. That channel originally was for my business. It started out, um, I was doing sporting goods sales. So I owned uh, a store, uh, online sales, that type of thing. I had actually started the exploring on what is now my second channel or my vlog channel. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So it kind of, eventually, I, I already had the following on the other channel. So I'm just like, and then I had shut down the sporting goods store. So I decided to just transition that channel into the exploring just so I can kind of keep the two uh, separated. But then everything kind of started kind of accumulating together. And I just started doing exploring on both channels. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> so, so you've got two channels. Yeah. So which would you say is your main channel? Uh, definitely exploring with Angelo. So that's the one that's uh, 100 five thousand yeah. or whatever subscribers yeah 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 and so you well you just posted an hour ago that's yeah good yeah it was Three uh days ago, five days ago yeah. yeah good so you're pretty consistent mm -hmm. um okay so speaking of that so you did just post uh you've been traveling a lot and it seems that every time i talk to you you're on the road somewhere mm -hmm. so uh what's sort of inspired this international travel and, and where have you been going uh, so what inspired it? I've just always liked to travel ever since I was young. I used to go away with my mom to like, uh, let's say Mexico or Italy or Dominican Republic, mostly vacations, obviously. But, uh, I just always kind of had a sense of adventure and like to see new things, uh, different, you know, countries, different cultures, different scenery. Um, and I always kind of 
wanted to have something that could basically, you know, give me an excuse to go somewhere new. Uh, and then at this point, that's basically what I'm doing. Like I'm traveling places that interest me for the most part. And, uh, just to kind of have an excuse to see them or be there. And then I can also kind of film and work uh, at the same time. Right. So uh, where have okay. I yeah. been recently? I just came back from a month long road trip. Um, oh man, I went all over the place. Where did I even go? <laughs> uh, New York, New York state, uh, which obviously has tons of abandoned places. Uh, so we did some yeah. of that. Uh, then we went to Massachusetts. Uh, then from Massachusetts, we went to Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh down to Branson, Missouri, or Springfield, Missouri. Uh, and then from there, we went to Texas. We were there for about a week. And uh, then from Texas to New Mexico, New Mexico to Arizona, and then basically back. I was going to go to Colorado, but by that time, I was just kind of like mentally exhausted. I'm just like, I, I don't want to, I can't function. Like I, my brain is not functioning at this point. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to do Colorado for now. But yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, congratulations. That's actually quite the accomplishment to be able to travel and see so much. Oh, yeah. You're one of the hardest working guys that I know in the in the industry or in the in the hobby. You're always on the go, mm -hmm. which leads me to my next question. So is this your main gig? Do you work or is this it? This is it. This is uh, pretty much all I do. And there, I'm probably going to be doing a couple of extra side projects on top of this as well. Right. Okay. So I asked, I, I just interviewed Ethan Minnie and his episode will have aired mm -hmm. uh, by the time this one does. But I asked him, and I'm going to ask you the same thing. Uh, do you have a backup just in case YouTube decides we can no longer support trespassing and we will no longer let you monetize your videos? Do you have a backup for yourself in case you lose this revenue stream? Uh, well, Right now, I would say I'm doing significantly less trespassing and exploring abandoned okay. places. Um, okay. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that I'm doing now, so right now I'm doing a lot of uh, Randonautica videos, uh, which is just a really weird app that we use. Uh, so a lot of times okay. we just use that randomly out, you know, we might end up in a forest or whatever that might be, or in the Arizona desert up in the mountains, uh, which we literally just did. Um <laughs> But a lot of the other stuff that I've been doing, because I do a lot of the haunted stuff as well, uh, right. a lot of that you can actually do by booking. So like I've, oh, okay. yeah, so I'll book like a haunted jail, uh, which we did in Texas. Uh, what else did we book? Uh, haunted funeral home in Buffalo and all these places at some point were either vacant or abandoned at some point. So technically it still kind of counts. <laughs> You're yeah, still no, totally. It's not, yeah. yeah. It's not all about, uh, trespassing which yeah. is you know i've i've explored with permission it's not as much fun but mm -hmm. i've done it <laughs> yeah but, uh, okay so you touched on my next question which is randonautica um i know very little about that and uh i was hoping you could tell us a little bit about what is randonautica how does it work and how are you using it to pump out so much content all the time uh, well, basically what Randonautica is, uh, the shortened version is it's sort of like a, it's an app that was designed to use a sort of quantum physics, so to say. So it uses, utilizes intent. So let's say you, your intent is the color yellow. Uh, it, it's supposed to take you to a location that's near you and there's supposed to be something that's related to the color yellow. It could be a banana. Okay. It could be a yellow school bus. It could be anything for that matter or there it could just be a dud it happens a lot of times where we end up at places that there's just nothing there or it's like a place that we can't enter like you know a bank at 12 o'clock at night so <laughs> so and then sometimes it'll take you to an abandoned location or it'll just take you to like a trail or a forest or whatever it is and uh, right. you sometimes encounter weird things um and that's pretty much the gist of it interesting and, and you've clearly I mean, you've clearly found found something with that because mm -hmm. you're getting good views. You're pumping out content like crazy using it, which is great. So congratulations. Thanks. Um, on to the next question is your haunted videos. So I've been out with you mm -hmm. and uh, Mo Sarji and a lot of people, you know, a lot of people sort of, you know, finger their nose at the people that do this haunted stuff. And mm -hmm. for me, I, I don't do it because it doesn't work for me. And I've tried it and it didn't work for me. But 
you know, to me, it's 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 entertainment. But when I saw you and Mo doing it at the Nazi house, mm -hmm. you guys are legitimately serious about this, and you're not just making this stuff up as you go. Like I've I, I've, I've witnessed it. So I wanted to ask you, what is the craziest experience you've had in terms of haunting that you cannot explain? Hmm. That I cannot explain. That's a good question. Uh, I mean, I've done so many places now had so many weird things happen um there's been so many occasions where crazy stuff has happened uh, i guess one that was significant to me uh was me and mo actually this was i think about three years ago uh i think it was january 2020 we went to a place called letchworth village asylum i don't know if you've been there but i've been there several times now and yeah. uh Basically, this is the first time Mo and I had ever been there, and it's one of the places, locations with one of the worst histories you can imagine. The things that they did to people there were just unfathomable. Um, so basically, we were confused when we first got there because, first of all, it was dark, and uh, we didn't know where the main building was. So I thought it was across the street. So Mo and I go down this dark road, and we're just walking, and I'm like, okay, I think that's the building. It turned out that wasn't the main building at all, uh, but it was the power plant building, which was funny. So we go in, and we're in the basement, and I think we were in the basement. It might have been the basement or like some sub-level basement or whatever. I just remember calling it the vacuum room because there was a room with like 30 vacuums. So we're in this one area and all of a sudden Mo starts choking. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm like, you okay? And he literally gets down on his hands and knees and he starts praying in Arabic. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Right? I'm like, dude, are you okay? And he's literally like... <coughs> And he finally like comes to and he says something was trying to choke me, like legitimately trying to choke him out. And wow. it, it was one of the strangest things ever. And then by chance, after uploading the video, another person who had been there at some point in time says, wow, that's insane because I was scratched in the exact same spot where Mo was standing. Wow. And, I, and I'm like, okay, that's <laughs> That's pretty crazy, right? So yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. We did we had no idea what it was, and it was just strange because it wasn't in one of the main buildings where patients would have been. Um, so we don't know why it happened or what the reason was for it to be in that place. Maybe something happened right. in that specific building. We have no idea. But uh, yeah, that was one of the craziest things. Apart from you know, random doors slamming periodically, it happens. Um, yeah. Just uh, another time I remember being in a jail. This was in Texas. And I filmed the, j the jail twice now. Um, the second time, probably as crazy as the first time. Uh, I haven't uploaded that series yet. But I remember the first time I was in the main jail area by myself. And uh, I was with my friend Lamar, if you know who Lamar Menz is. And uh, he was in the building next to me. So he wasn't even in the same building. His girlfriend, Chelsea, was sleeping on the couch in, like, the side house. And uh, all I remember hearing is somebody singing, like a man singing, clearly, clear as day. I could hear it with my own ears. I'm like, oh, wow, that was pretty crazy. And then, like, moments later, it happened again, but even more clear than the first time. And I caught both of them on camera, and I'm like, okay, that's insane. Like, I don't know where it came from. Um it, it was just cool that I even caught it on camera at all. And um, I asked uh, Lamar, I even checked his footage after. And I'm like, were you like screaming or singing or something? And he's like, no. And, it, and first of all, he's got, I don't know if you've ever heard him speak. He has like the deepest voice you'll probably ever hear. And I'm yeah. like, it doesn't even remotely sound similar to him. Chelsea was sleeping. So I got no idea what the hell that even was. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, that's so funny. I've had um, I've had two experiences that I can't quite explain. One of them uh, was when the first time we did uh, Rockwood Asylum okay. with uh, my, myself, D Dog, Carlo, and Rhythm Rider. And Rhythm Rider and I had set up our hammocks in one room. D Dog and Carlo were up the hall in the cafeteria, and it was uh, we had all gone to sleep. I don't know, maybe like four in the morning, three four in the morning, 
And I, I can never sleep when I sleep in these places. So I'm laying in my hammock and I heard footsteps as clear as day coming down the hallway. My eyes were closed. I was in my hammock. I'm trying to sleep. And I hear these footsteps coming down the hallway so vivid that I think it's a security guard coming to get us mm -hmm. or somebody doing a patrol through the building. I kept my eyes closed and I listened as these footsteps got closer and closer and they stopped right at the door, the threshold of the door of the room that I was in. I opened my eyes, nothing there. Really? And I was not sleeping. I wasn't dreaming. And if you look up uh, history and reports from people who used to work at that asylum, they'll say that the night staff hated working nights because of the sound of footsteps in the hallways hmm. in that building. Wow. <laughs> I had, so I'm, I'm, I, I, I had a similar well, experience actually at Burwash when we were trying okay. to sleep. Uh, something uh, We had set up a tent. It was me, Mo, and Rennie. We set up a tent in the middle of the cafeteria area. And yeah. it, it was funny because this was after we had already finished all of our filming. And I know the way Mo is. He can't sleep in places like that as well. And I'm like, 100% come like 3 o'clock in the morning, Mo is going to want to leave, right? <laughs> so anyways, this was before that. So we're, we're in the tent. Rennie's out cold. I don't know how the hell he fell asleep so fast. But uh, Mo and I are kind of like right next to each other in this tent. And all we hear is like something moving metal, like a metal trash can or something. And we're like, what the hell is that? We come out of the tent. We're looking around. Nothing there. All I saw was like a little mouse crawl by. And I'm like, okay, well, it couldn't have been a mouse moving an, an entire piece of metal. So we're yeah. like, okay, whatever. We tried going back to sleep. Same thing happened again. And then it happened again after that. And Mo is like at some point in the dark with his night vision camera, just like looking around, trying to see what's moving or what's making this weird sound. And then at this point he gets out. He's like, okay, pack up your stuff. We're leaving. I'm like, call it. I knew it was going to happen. So of course you've been to Burwash. It's like an hour and a half hike back to the car. You the in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> so we left at three o'clock in the morning. We finally get back to the car at 4.30. Now we're driving from there into Sudbury, which is at least another, what, 40 minutes to an hour. Now we're trying yeah. to find a hotel room that will actually take us at 5.30 in the morning. And I'm like, oh, my God. It was like – it was such a weird, funny experience. But, yeah, he he, def yeah, yeah. he definitely got spooked. But it's, Did you uh, hear what happened with um, uh, Brand uh, Brandon from Uncharted Travels? At, no. Uh, oh, with the coyotes. The coyotes. Yeah. 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 He got surrounded by coyotes. Oh, boy. Crazy story. Anyways, so okay, so let's we've talked about uh, some of your craziest experiences that you can't explain. What about like your what's your what's your favorite uh, experience that you've had, whether it's an abandoned place or a place you've traveled to, uh, something that you've published that that's already out there. What's your favorite moment that you've had? Um, I've had a lot now at this point. Um... One of my favorite locations to explore and just experience overall was definitely the Titanic Mansion. Um, that place, yeah. I don't think, have you ever done that place? No. No? Really. Oh, man. It was so worth it. Um, just yeah. the way we had to do it was hilarious because we had to, like, basically run through forests and hide and shit just to get in there. But once we were in there, we were like, holy crap. I think we were in there for, like, a good three, four hours. And uh, it was a, just an amazing experience. The place is just marvelous. And we got very lucky because literally two days after, they installed security cameras around the whole building. So, wow. yeah, we got extremely lucky. And uh, what else would I say was really cool? Um, doing stuff in Japan. That was cool. I did the Billionaire's Mansion. Uh, that was okay. pretty notorious. Um, did the... Uh, the forest, we'll just call it the famous Japanese forest. You don't get no, in trouble. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, I like experiencing the desert now. I did it. I went to Vegas for the first time last February, and then I did Arizona in April, and then I did New Mexico, I think, in like May or something like that. And now I just can't get enough of it. It's just super scenic and really, really cool. Uh, there was one video in particular – that uh, was a crazy experience. Um, so we were in New Mexico and we ended up at an abandoned missile silo. Like it was very oh, wow. deep, a bunch of levels. And um, I just remember 
going up it was like open there's a so if you're looking for the video there's a picture of me i'm you know typical uh shock face thumbnail with a like this or whatever uh, and you see that there's uh, yeah. the the big gate is open where the silo where the uh, missile would have come okay. out from so we get there i approach i'm like oh cool look at this and i'm like looking down and whatever whatever so i'm there filming i come back around and i'm like okay let me go and see what jazz is doing which is my friend yasko because he was uh mm -hmm. one of the other spots around there and uh i'm coming back around and at this point i had stopped recording and i look and there's just a rattlesnake just sitting there and i'm like oh shit and i just start running i wasn't even recording at this point i'm, I'm just running and screaming and because i had never seen a rattlesnake at, up until that point and yeah. uh we get i get back to my friend jazz he's like whoa whoa what's going on i'm like bro there's a huge rattlesnake over there and <laughs> I checked the footage and I realized that because of where it was sitting, it was sitting there with its tail like on the edge, but then leaning all the way down into the actual silo. And yeah. when I checked the footage, I realized that where I had stood was maybe a foot away from it. Yeah. And appar apparently they can detect like body heat and stuff if you're close to them. Yeah, so yeah. I got really lucky that I didn't get bit. Very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> so there was that incident. Uh, moments later, we open the door. We're about to go down. Jazz is in front of me. He's uh, holding his camera. I'm behind him holding my camera. He's shining his light. He takes like three steps down. And he goes, oh, my God. And he just starts screaming. He's like, run, run, run. I'm like, what the hell is going on? He's like, there was a snake coming up the stairs. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I, I, at that point, we're like, okay, this place is clearly infested. Let's just leave. This is clearly not worth it. Um, yeah. And at this point, we're like in the middle of nowhere. We're like maybe an hour away from Roswell. And there's literally like nothing around apart from abandoned missile silo and whatever, like farmland. Yeah. So at this point, we're walking up the driveway. Uh, when all of a sudden, I hear something quickly going through the grass. So we start running again. We stop, slow down. We're like, what is going on? Why are there so many snakes everywhere? When all of a sudden, uh, Jazz turns and he hears in the in the grass, like right next to us. So we start oh running, running again, all the way to the gate. We're like, just don't stop running. Just get to the gate, jump over it. Just get in the effing car and just leave. That's it. So it was just <laughs> such a crazy experience. That's not You guys so lucky, like three oh, times yeah. over. <laughs> right i think four times just the fourth time the worst one time where we didn't see yeah. it right so but oh my god so lucky <laughs> um so you talk about some of your exploring partners uh do you prefer exploring with another person or a group or by yourself um i've done all of the above but i do kind of like exploring with other people especially if i'm filming because we kind of you know mm -hmm. can either bounce off of each other which to me is a very important aspect to the videos um because yeah. you know random banter i guess to me yeah. is important in my videos uh because sometimes you know you might run out of things to say i guess and then it's just pure silence yeah. right and it's just like okay well right. that's awkward but um uh, yeah all of the above i, I th all right. think i prefer exploring with other people just for safety reasons for um, sure. yeah but yeah to each is their own Cool. Have you ever been hurt or injured? Uh, yes. I've almost fallen off of a cliff at one point. Uh, that was with Mo at Kings Park because okay. we were going from one building to another. And uh, instead of going the easy route, Mo's like, oh, let's just take this. It looks like a shortcut. And it's like this big wall, like a giant retaining wall that's part of like the side of a cliff, I guess you could say. And basically, uh, I got really lucky on that one because for some reason, somebody had tied a fire hose around a tree. So I had stuck my hand in the fire hose, took one step, lost my footing. Camera's basically almost about to slide off a mountain or the cliff or whatever. Grabbed it in one hand and I'm just like, oh shit. Okay, well, that was close. Uh, stepped on nails before, uh, cut myself on glass. I mean, you know, the usual yeah. stuff that we go through. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow. What about uh, what about the law? Have you had any serious run-ins with law, uh, security, police, owners? Like, have you been charged? 
Uh, I did, yes. I had, uh, I was once charged with break and enter, um, yeah. which it was just kind of ridiculous the way the cops were trying to obviously frame the whole thing because it was obviously yeah. an abandoned house. Uh, but that was obviously dropped, got a good lawyer, they dealt with it, and it just kind of went away, essentially. They dropped all the charges. Uh, yeah. And then apart from that, there was one incident where we were... I think we were in New Hampshire. It was me, Mo, and Carlo. I'm sure Carlo's probably told you the story uh, of us running, basically hiding in the woods from police and canines, uh, which was funny. Uh, We got away, I guess you could say. And then once we kind of hiked all the way through this forest, which was super muddy and wet, like I got my shoe at one point got stuck right in the mud and then my foot came right out and I lost my footing and I had to stomp with just my sock right into the yeah, yeah. into the swamp water. Uh, and then by the time we got out, the cops were waiting for us. They saw us walking up the road because, uh, you know, an all black truck with Ontario plates kind of sticks out like a sore thumb in the middle of yeah. on the side of the road in the middle of New Hampshire. So they knew it was us. But then when they came to us, we just basically played stupid with them. And they're like, oh, you didn't go to the haunted house over there, did you? And we're like, what haunted house? There's a haunted house. Can we go? Right? It's like, it was it was pretty obvious that we were playing stupid, but the cops were like being really nice just because, you know, we're just YouTubers just doing stupid stuff right. and whatever. <laughs> but yeah, it was hilarious though because we essentially changed all of our identities. So we all like swapped shirts. Uh, we all swapped hats. So we didn't look exactly the same coming out from when we went in, just in case there was like right. cameras and stuff. So we kind of like messed them all up. It was it was pretty yeah, funny. funny. Yeah. Uh, for, um... yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, apart from that, I think that was pretty much it. Oh, okay. Uh, so the next question that I ask everybody is, uh, what's in your camera bag? What is, what What gear are you using? Uh, so I have a Canon M50 mirrorless camera. Uh, I also have a Sony Handycam, which I usually use for night vision purposes. Uh, I think those are the two main cameras. I do have an extra camera that used to be my main camera, and I just kind of keep it on me just in case, you know, one decides to poop out. Um, but yeah, apart from that, a couple of extra lenses. Um, what else do I have? Uh tripods um flashlight o light one of the best things i've ever purchased highly recommend uh-huh. um and then i have like several different equipment containers for all the ghost equipment as well so okay and so for ghost equipment what do you use uh so typical emf meter of course uh spirit box uh headphones because now we do something called the estes method which is really fascinating and seems to work really well uh cat balls uh they basically light up from motion to tell you when something is there uh a rem rem pod i have like about three of them one of them is super super loud and super annoying um what else do i got i have a music box which i recently purchased it's motion uh it's basically got a motion sensor built in and it plays like this really creepy music if something is basically moves in front of it and oh, then cool. I also have a device called a paranormal script. It's kind of new, hit or miss with it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but it's essentially a word bank that spirits can choose uh, words to communicate with us. Sometimes, like I said, it works really well. Sometimes uh, it just gives out random words, but it's just uh, what it is, I guess. And then I think I have a couple other random things. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And so, uh, who out there, whether it's, you know, obviously, you know, I, I obviously have geared this towards exploring, but when you've got things like, uh, you know, going out into the desert and Randonautica and all the other stuff that you do and ghost hunting, who is, uh, who really inspires you? Who is out there doing the same thing that you sort of get inspiration from? Um, well, originally it was all you guys before I met any of you really i used to watch all of your videos used to um i still watch your videos uh i just have significantly less time to do so these days so i'm not able to watch everybody's videos because there's so much content out there 
but yeah, yeah or, originally it was just all of you guys. I'm like, man, these guys are so cool. The, they go and they they find all these cool locations, and they're always running from security, and um, <laughs> it just looked like a lot of fun. And I'm like, I would like to do what these guys do. I think it's pretty cool. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awesome. And so now, um, so you've been doing this for quite a while. You've got quite a bit of experience under your, under your, uh, under your belt. So if there was a young explorer out there or a young ghost hunter, a young YouTuber who wants to get out there and, and start in these hobbies, mm -hmm. uh, what advice would you give somebody is looking to start out doing what you do? Oh boy. Um, I guess like in terms of becoming successful on YouTube, is that what you're asking? Or just in general? Uh, like just uh, getting into any of these hobbies that you do, uh, whether it's for fun or to get into YouTube, you know, like what yeah. type of advice would you give? Okay. Well, I guess it would be, it would have to be specific based on somebody's circumstances or situation. Uh, if you wanted to do it as a hobby, just treat it like a, like a hobby, just have fun with it. Um, obviously be careful and stay as safe as possible. Go with friends if you can. Um, but yeah, I guess, set aside the drama that a lot of people have consistently tried to pull off in this hobby because at the same time it's just a hobby um so yeah. just have fun with it that's all you got to do if it's something that interests you just just have fun that's what it's all about right uh, i know that's how i started out uh on the other hand if you want to create a successful youtube channel then you got to treat it more like almost like a business, I guess, or just treat it entirely like a business. Be as consistent as possible. Find techniques that uh, work for you. Uh, also being yourself and trying not to be like anybody else who, you know, is a, I guess, personality on YouTube. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely take it very seriously as if you would take uh, a job seriously or a business seriously, because if you want to be successful, hobbies typically don't pay very well so um treat it more like you know a profession at the end of the day like always look for ways to improve improve your quality whether it's your camera work or your equipment um and also be prepared to spend a lot of money because this thing is not cheap at all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's great Excellent. That's a lot of good advice. Mm -hmm. Everybody that I talk to always says, be yourself. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody says, don't get involved in the drama. As hard as it is to not get sucked into the drama, don't get involved in the drama. And you make a very good point about treating it like a business. And, mm -hmm. you know, on, on my side, I do very much treat what I do like a business mm -hmm. behind the scenes. And uh, you're right. It's, it's consistency. It's branding. It's, you know, figuring out you know your persona i always like to call it like a cartoon character version of my real self yeah exactly <laughs> you know yeah and that's it so this has been awesome we've all learned a little bit a lot more about angelo um i'm gonna put all angelo's links down below both youtube channels instagram uh twitter make sure you guys are following angelo subscribe to his channel watch his stuff get involved drop him a message tell him you came from the podcast that's about it. Angelo, thanks a lot for being here. It's been a great interview. You're uh, looking forward to hanging out again sometime. And uh, thanks a lot for joining the podcast. All right. Thanks for having me. Okay, guys. So that was Angelo exploring with Angelo. And I knew that he would have some great stories, especially with his ghost hunting. And like I said, and I've said many times, I don't personally really believe in the ghost thing. It doesn't, other than really one or two times, I haven't had that many experiences and you'd think that being in as many of these abandoned places as, as I've been, that I would have had many, many more ghost experiences than I actually have. But I have had a couple, so I can't say that I'm totally a non-believer. So anyways, as we do at this part of every podcast, it is Urbex Book Club time. And we are going to read again, as we do every week, a couple of lines from Access All Areas, the book written by the late Jeff Chapman, also known as Ninjalicious a pioneer of the urban exploration hobby as we know it. And wouldn't you know it, he's got a couple of paragraphs about dealing with the supernatural. This is page 102 of Access All Areas. And here is what Jeff Chapman had to say in 2005 about hauntings and the paranormal. While I esteem ghost hunters and paranormal enthusiasts as fellow intrepid adventurers 
in off-limits locations, bluntly, I recommend not concerning yourself with ghosts or hauntings until such time as a poltergeist actually walks up to you and says hi. I'm not suggesting that you actively refuse to believe in anything supernatural, merely that you take an agnostic approach and don't believe it until you see it. There's no real downside to doing this, since ghosts, unlike gods, aren't known for punishing people for their lack of faith. If they are real and they want you to know they're real, they will let you know. In the meantime, don't worry about it. Urban exploration is cool enough and tense enough as it is without forcing in fantasy elements or other imaginary sources of extra tension. Staying grounded in reality not only gives you one less thing to worry about while you're exploring, it will also remove that tiny nagging voice in the back of your head that says maybe your excitement is rooted in self-delusion. Not actively believing in or seeking out the supernatural doesn't need to diminish your exploratory experiences, as you can still be fully tuned into the powerful vibes and spirits of the places you visit and still savor their very real creepiness. There's just no need to attribute these feelings to anything paranormal. So what he's saying, don't fake it. If it happens, it happens. And I do truly believe in the time that I spent exploring with Angelo and Mo, these guys are actually doing this. They believe it. I think for the most part, the stuff that you see in their videos is probably real. I do not think uh, a lot of it is faked. I know some guys fake it. Some of it is faked. Some of it is you know, in your imagination. But just like Jeff says in Access All Areas, if the ghosts are there and they want you to know, they will come to you. And I would say two, maybe three times they have come to me. Uh, once I got it on camera, the other two, I didn't get it on camera. Fortunately for my friends Mo and Angelo and some of these other guys, they managed to get a lot of the stuff on camera. So that has been Urbex Book Club. Once again, access all areas. Tune in next week as we read a couple more paragraphs from the book from something that is highly relevant to that specific episode. Okay, guys, that's a wrap on episode six. We've made it six episodes of All Access, the Photography Urban Exploration Podcast. Massive thanks to my friend Angelo for joining us for this episode. He's got great stories, great guy. I did have to find myself checking my chill bringing myself down a little bit because I do tend to get very hyper. Breaking news, guys, I just found out from Angelo not long after our episode that he has actually been working on his own podcast. He has invited me to come on it. I don't know when he's going to launch it. Make sure you're watching and following Angelo uh, and keep your eyes open when he launches his own podcast. Next week, guys, we're going to meet with a girl named Trespass Everywhere. She's got an excellent little book that she made based on stories and uh, letters that she found in a number of abandoned places. So we're going to talk to her about that. And then the next week, finally, guys, we have my interview with a lawyer. We're going to talk with a criminal lawyer about what you need to know about trespassing, breaking the law, and maybe how she can help you to get yourselves in a pickle. So that's it, guys. Make sure you leave a review on Apple Podcasts if you're there. I got to go, guys. See you guys next week. Peace.